It's still plus politics. Now, there are indications that the 2023 presidential elections may be the last chance for the eminent Nigerians, or some of them, who have been within the corridors of power for a very long time. Now, since the return of the current political dispensation in 1999, the likes of the People's Democratic Party presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar and Bola Ahmed Tinubu of the All Progressive Congress presidential candidates now have been in the corridors of power for a very long time. While Atiku was Nigeria's vice president from 1999 to 2007, Tinubu was involved in the creation of political parties that brought President Muhammadu Buhari to power. Now, since then, Atiku has moved around political parties in his quest to occupy Nigeria's highest political seat. Like Atiku, Tinubu belongs to the class of octogenarians with, the age, with his age put at 70. Well, joining us to discuss this are Uche Chita, uh, a political analyst, and Ufoma Ibamuna, who is a journalist. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Great. Um, it's very... Hello. Okay. It's very interesting that we're talking about these two people who seem to be the flag bearers of the two major political parties for 2023. Now, there has been chatter, you know, in some corridors about this being their last shot at any form of power or relevance. But then for an article, we keep seeing him reinvent himself and continuously uh, being the flag bearer of the People's Democratic Party. But if he were to not emerge as president, come 2023, does he still have a lifeline left? I'll start with you, former. Um, to be very honest, uh, you can never say never for a Nigerian politician. Um, that's the honest truth. Um, yes, Atiku is in the 70s as we speak. Um, if he doesn't get elected to come next year, 2023, uh, there's still an election cycle in, in about five years' time which will be 2027. I honestly would not put it past an Atiku Abubata coming up again in 2027, just in case, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't get um, um, the, the presidential victory next year. However, another way to look at it would be, um, a lot of Texans are already suggesting in 2022 that he probably should retire you know, this is his fourth um, try, you know, to be the president of Nigeria since 1992. That's about um, 30 years ago or thereabout. Um, some are already suggesting now that he possibly should retire and, you know, possibly, you know, look for someone younger. Uh, so you would expect those calls to also come up again in 2027. However, uh, he's a dogged politician. He's... I, I, he was not one of those who said it was his lifelong ambition, but you want to think that Tiku Abubata wants to be president of Nigeria. If he doesn't get it next day, I would not put it past him trying again in 2027. Uche, um, looking at the two somewhat, I'm using the word underdog loosely here, movements that have seem, seemingly taken over not just social media, but even the streets of the different parts of the country, with the hashtag obedient movement. And we also have the Kwankwasia movement. Uh, may not be as huge, but it is a movement of sorts, as opposed to the, uh, um, the APC and the PDP who have these, in quote, strong men. Um, do we see if, again, like I said, there is an opportunity for, or the opportunity for them to be president it does not necessarily happen? Do we see a reemergence of any of these gentlemen, be it a Tinubu or an Atiku, especially a Tinubu? Many have complained, uh, many have queried his health, uh, many have queried his capabilities, many have said, uh, I've even questioned why he's so intent on being president. But do we see a reemergence uh, of a Tinubu or an Atiku in 2023? Well, um, in the political landscape of Nigeria, um, starting from the PDP, I don't see any other individual that can wrestle the presidential ticket from our article. Um, once he put his hat in the ring for the 2023 elections, I, I told people like I, I was so I could put money on it. I was almost guaranteed that he was going to win the ticket. There was nobody in in the primaries. Uh, uh, an article is formidable. PDP. He knows the politics. He has been doing it for a long time. 
I mean, he's trained with the best, like people like, um, God bless his soul, Major General Yadua, um, the PTM movement. So he knows what to do to get a ticket. He knows what to do to get a ticket in the PDP. The only time he encountered some kind of obstacle was in um, 2011, and even then it was very formidable. I mean, he made um, Babangida, IBB, um, Gusau, and a couple of other Northerners stepped down for him, and he became a nothing consensus candidate against good luck, Jennifer. Um, by providence, um, good luck, Jennifer, still emerged, but uh, I know the sweat that was put in place to make sure that happened, because I was actually part of that campaign. Um, or look, Jonathan, to become the candidate in uh, for 2011. Uh, moving forward, he can always get a 2023 ticket. Nothing stops him. Now, the same thing with um, uh, Tinubu. Tinubu basically can get the ticket of APC anytime he wants. Even the, the sitting president, um, Major General, General Buhari, actually tried to stop them using different means, but could not stop a Tinubu from taking the ticket of the APC. He's basically unstoppable. It's basically his party. You put the people in place. He's helped a lot of people along the way. They all in politically. So if 2027 comes about and he needs the APC ticket, they'll hand it over to him. The world, as we know, has no problem handing um, tickets to all people. The people who make noise, like, like, like I can call it noise about these old politicians retired, are just looking for the, an easy way to remove their biggest obstacles they're getting power. We see the case in the US where uh, um, Joe Biden got the Democratic Party ticket and he became president. Now, are they the best people? No, they're definitely not the best people. But because of the way party politics is in Nigeria, uh, and party politics are all around the world, such strong men always emerge, you know. So uh, that's just the reality of things. We, we, we can't get away. Uh, Ufema, what does this say? I mean, following from what Uche has said about the fact that these, in quotes again, strong men will always emerge, being that they seem to have the party at their whims and caprices. But um, when we talk about the revolution or evolution of politics in Nigeria, has there even been any whatsoever? Again, I go back to the movements that we're seeing. Many people have also queried those movements, saying that they're just social media, online movements. When it comes down to it, these are the guys who know the political terrain and these are the guys who will always sail through. But have we really evolved in the politicking process Will there come a time in the future, after 2023, where maybe these strong men would not be as strong anymore? Or maybe, they, will there be a time where the parties will not be at their whims and caprices? Or be wary of them and, you know, how they politic and decide that they would go with another? Um, Mary Ann, the honest answer to that question is, um, I'm not sure that's going to stop anytime soon. Okay. See... You can hate them for all you care. You can say all the things you want to say about them. Um, the, the bottom line still remains that these guys have been entrenched in the system. I, you know, I just told you that Atiko Bubakar contested for the very first time to become president as far back as 1992. My younger sister was just about a year or two old at the time. She's married. She has a three-year-old son. That should, that should tell you, you know, um, how long that has been. Uh, these guys know what it takes to, to, to politic. Um, they've, they've entrenched enough into the system. A Tinubu, for example, did not just wake up and get the APC ticket overnight. You know, he's worked for it. Since he left power in 2027, in, in 2007, you know, he has been ensuring that he gets people into power, from governors to legislators, you know, senators, House of Assembly members in states, and at the end of the day, in 2022, all of these things came back to play to ensure that he got the APC ticket. And that's almost the same thing um, with Tinubu. You know, my, my colleague over there mentioned the fact that um, when, Tinubu, when Atiku put his hat into the ring, he, he said that he was going to win the election. That's exactly what I said as far back as last year, you know, or even early this year. There are two people, as it is right now, 
um, in Nigeria who have the name, the wealth, the experience, and the political clout to become president. Those two are the two front runners uh, or the two candidates of the two biggest political parties. I'm talking the APC. I'm, so, I'm sorry to come in, but let me just quickly ask you. Let me quickly ask you something, Informa. Just, just quickly before I lose that train of thought. You talked about the. The, the personality and the political clout to win these elections. Does money politics play a role? Is that the clout that we're talking about? Because we saw that there could have been a shift of sorts just before uh, the, the, electo the electoral process in itself started for both political parties. The clout we're talking about here, is it just about knowing people, the spread or the spread of their monies, their bank accounts? M Marianne, it's all encompassing. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot rule away money politics in Nigeria. Unfortunately, you can't. Uh, mm, mm. For those of us who live in urban cities or urban centers, you know, it's, it's not so easy to sway us with cash and business. But go to the hinterland. Go to Rogun, for example, in Delta State. Go to the remotest of villages in Borno State where some of them don't even have power. Talk less of even having, you know, um, um, uh, what's it called, um, satellite TV to watch us, for example, right now. These guys can be swayed with as low as 500 naira. 500 naira, Marianne. You know, so the, the truth of the matter is that money still gets involved in all of these uh, conversations. However, aside money, I just told you about how entrenched these guys are. Before 2014 or before 2015, remember that the ruling party at the time, the PDP, repeatedly told us Nigerians that they were ready to rule for 60 years. There was a reason the PDP kept making those boastful comments. They were the only national party who had their spread in all the nook and cranny of this country until the Bolatinobus and the Buaris of this world decided to merge together you know, and form the APC. And right now, we have two dominant parties where in every ward or every local government or that you go to, you can see their imprint. Unfortunately, for you to win an election as big as the presidential election, you need to be visible in almost, if not all, local government areas. Sadly, as, as great as the uh, momentum of um, Epita Obi, for example, and I love the fact that you know, he's, co he's coming up and a lot of Nigerians are supporting him, but a lot still needs to be done by Epita Obi and the, and the number of Nigerians supporting him to be able to match the kind of uh, um, um, political clout and um, visibility that the likes of a the APC with Tinubu and PDP with Atiku have been able to garner over the years. Okay. All right, let me come back to you, Uche. Again, yeah. from what uh, Ufoma has said, he's talking about the money politics part. So I'm going to tie it to the other question. Um, if, why do we expect change, politically and otherwise, if money politics always takes the day for whatever elections, whether it be local, state, and, of course, at the federal level? Again, uh, Uf Ufoma makes, uh, uh, you know, that case of the fact that these strong men will continuously emerge because of the prowess that they have politically. When will the system give way for others to emerge, including those who have been tutored, mentored, and even those who have the best of Nigeria at heart, so the best um, ideas to lead us? When will there be a paving of way for these people, if we ever want the kind of Nigeria that we're all praying for? I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be tough, um, very tough. Uh, however, there's a, there's a, there's a, like, I, I, it would be unfair to remove all the hope that is being carried into the 2022 elections, um, with the obedience um, wave that is going on right now. And the, the possibility I see is that we have two great, when I use the word great, it's not as if they're very good people, but it's just how big they are. At Siku and Tinubu running. And because of how of their, their, their strength and how they can match each other, there is the possibility of somebody just stealing the crumbs and, like, you know, taking anything can happen. That's really the only reason why 
um, PWP has a chance because we have two key candidates, uh, PDP and APC fighting head to head. So like uh, PWP can just come in from somewhere and just, you know, it, it, it's by chance. Now, uh, it's, it's a very sad state to say Nigeria has become, uh, we are now subject to chance happening for us to make some positive change. But honestly, at this point, that's what all that we have left. You know, there is no working way for uh, a, a proper country to emerge where good leaders emerge, who are the best candidates, who are intellectually sound, and who can actually contribute and take Nigeria to the next level. The system as it is does not allow such people to emerge, and that's the truth. So, but those people can emerge. There's something called chance. And um, they say time and chance happens to them all. Like, like if you go biblically, um, they discredit, they talk about all, all people just think all those means anything. They talks about people who are strong, who are swift, who are this, who are that. By the time people develop capacity, then their time and chance can happen. So the people we imagine right now winning can be a situation of where his time and chance happen, where he has developed himself, he has done this and done that. And he's not the most prepared person there, and his time and chance have happened. But yeah. you know, him emerging not necessarily because he can compete money wise, he can compete rich wise, he can compete, and there's a path, there's a direct path. No, there's no path. We have to be, be truthful about that. Um, but anything can happen. Can that time and chance happen in 2023? Is it possible? Do we see that emerging in the horizon? Because I ask because um, early this morning I was on the radio and I was talking about the fact that we are seeing every day, more than ever, more people leaving in droves. Is this a sign of, you know, um, more like we're throwing our hands, you know, up in the air or throwing in the towel as to how this country can make progress? Because I keep asking, when we all leave, who stays to make that change? Who will be the disruptors that we're hoping will emerge? I mean, we'll, we'll try, but we, we have a system where people write results. A um, hundred people might go vote, and by the time you see the results, uh, they've changed the Abuja, you know, they write whatever they want. Yes, we have the system whereby they're transmitting votes in real time, the Electoral Act has been changed, but have we tested this Electoral Act? This is the first election that's going to change, test the, the, the changes in the Electoral Act about transmission results by, from the polling booth. We, we, we've seen the numbers that are being registered in the North, and, they, and, and this, the INEC registration says, okay, the new system is like you register online. And you see these numbers in the north, and we know the internet connection is not that great in Medjugri and the Bonus and all these remote places that have Boko Haram, but the numbers are increasing. So what does that tell you? I mean, you're preparing a situation whereby you write results. And you can only write results if you have strong men who can defend their turf. You know, and that's the reason why we talk about strong men. We don't talk about strong men because they have the command votes. No. Talk about strong men because they can command strength in the sense that the people who have the possibility and the ability to cause mayhem if things don't go their way. That's what a strong man is. A strong man is somebody who can go to the INEC official at the highest level, at the rec level, at the commissioner's level, and settle them and, and say, you know what, just do this. Let's settle in court. Let anybody who has anything against us come to court and, uh, and fight the matter, you know. And, mm. and that's just how it is. Okay. Um, so, um, that's the Nigeria that's the system. It's not changing overnight. We, we can't expect it to change overnight. And I, I really don't know. I mean, time and chance can happen, but this is not the reality. Fine, new former. We have just one minute. Um, Uche seems to paint a picture. Yeah, yeah be, let, let me just quickly ask. What shred of hope does okay. the average Nigerian have to hold on to now? You're telling them not to jackpa. But then what should they stay for? What's the hope that we need to hold on to? Because we need something to hold on to. Okay, just, just to correct a little bit of the notion, uh, Nigeria's living in growth did not start today. It won't stop today. Um, back in the 80s when I was a child, I remember the song, Andrew, no check out. Uh, people were living in growth in the 80s. People left in the 90s. People were living in the 2000s. It will continue you know, in, in, in the year that we are in right now. But that's not to say that the government in power are not, are not doing enough. That's the honest reality. They are not doing enough. Also, um, the Electoral Act 2022, I've been saying this for God knows how long. I think it's one of the best things to happen to Nigeria. Um, it's been tested already in the governorship election in a state. We saw how prompt 
results coming. You see all of that rigging that usually characterizes Nigerian elections. It is going to be reduced to the barest minimum in 2023. If you do not go out to canvass for votes, I am sorry for you. If you are hoping to write results the way they've been writing it all this while, Marianne, I can, I can assure you that the chances of that happening in 2023 is going to be reduced to the barest minimum, okay. which is why I think, to a large extent, that Peter Obi stands a chance. What is the chance he has? He has rather, well, we would have to wait till the elections come. Okay, well, better way to put it. Well, I want to say thank you uh, to my guest. Uche Chita is a political analyst, and Ufoma Bamano is the head of news uh, with 99.3 Nigeria Info here in Lagos. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mira. All right. And uh, that's the show tonight. I want to thank you all for being part of the conversation. Tomorrow is another day. We look at the big stories in the political scene right here in Nigeria. And sometimes we go outside of the country to spread our tentacles. I'm Mary Anacon. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good evening. <laughs>